Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Veos. Uh, today in video 7 I'll be uh, telling you how to uh, build that small little SSTO that can make it into uh, space without using any engines. And also we'll be going over how the X2 is coming along. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. been a long week. I'm slightly exhausted, but I've got some energy. Whoops! Don't want to show you that just yet. Go away. Da -da 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 -da. Aha. Here we are. Now this one I showed you on, uh, oh wow, it's a thunderstorm outside, oops. This one I showed you um, on the last video, and I promised you I'd show you how to build one. So let's go ahead and make one. We'll make this a new build. Alright, what you want to start off with is this little core body, or probe body. Then basically just get yourself some uh, fuel tanks. Hold down Alt, hold down Alt, 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 D key, there you go. Put a nose on it. I use this one only because of the fact that it adds weight and it kind of looks cool. It's got that whole um, drone thing going on. And let's see, we need an engine for when we get into space. 48-7S is good. And we need some wings. Okay. Because not only will this stabilize our craft, but it will help us get up there. And I use these first because you can actually um, attach a whole bunch of stuff to these. Unlike this one right here, which is kind of harder to do. This one acts more like a... Um, a platform. So what we'll do is we'll grab this, make sure your symmetry's on. And uh, just to show you guys that I'm not cheating, allow part clipping in editors is off, so we're good to go. None of that mess. Alright, let's try this again. Looks like we're going to have to flip this. That's about good. Ah, crap. Well, let me redo that. Uh huh. There we go. Okay, I turned angular snap on, um, angle snap on. And that allows you to go right in the middle, as you can see. Instead of having it a little too high or a little too low, it allows you to go right into the middle of the wing, which kind of makes it into one wing. All right, small control surfaces. Same thing, just flip it around. The storm outside is sounding worse and worse every second. Hopefully I don't lose power. Alright, just like that. Allows for yaw. Now we'll get these little wings and uh, here's the tedious part. Alright, hold shift and use the Q and E keys. There we go. Hold down, hold down Alt. And there, we, oh, there we go. Alt. Alt again. And pretty much just go all the way to the top. 
Alright, hold down your middle mouse key and move up. Or middle mouse button. Oops. There we go. Alright. Now take the probe. E key. Flip it over. Same thing. Alt copy, okay. Oops, there we go. Bring it up. Like that. this come on sometimes it does not like to be nice Okay, that'll do. Alright, grab the probe body, flip it around. And we're going to need some solar cells. I have yet to uh, find a way to put a generator on there, which would be a whole lot better. But for now, we'll just use the cells. Alright. Next thing you want to do is you want to tie it down as best as you can with these struts because you will be reaching disgusting amounts of speeds very, very quickly. I shouldn't say disgusting amount of speeds. I, sh I should say you reach enormous amount of speeds disgustingly quickly is what I was trying to say which means you can jump up to a thousand ms in maybe a few seconds yeah of course if you've seen the video previously before this one you'll know that and you need struts to keep this thing from flying apart quite literally so make sure your symmetry's on and just start sticking stuff stuff that you believe might fly off. Like the solar panel. I think that'll do. I think we got enough struts. Now let's check our uh, center of mass and lift. And our center of mass is just... A sm I mean, it'll do. I think that'll be okay. Hopefully. Hopefully. Alright. Let's go ahead and... Put some launch stability enhancers on this. Hit the Q key. There we go. And now grab the probe body. And holding shift and using your... Wow, that was a lot of thunder. Holding shift and using your mouse wheel. Scroll up. There we go. And we will call this... X3, whoops, X3, uh, probe, uh, probe, uh, space, no, space, all the, well, DAC, SP, 
There we go. X3SP. Space probe. Yay. Launch. Please don't crash on me. My computer's going on, I don't know, five years? It's um, an alien... Uh, alien, yeah. So it still runs pretty well, but uh, unfortunately it, it is showing signs of aging. Let's uh, go ahead and... Because we're going to lose power here pretty fast. Fast forward to daylight. All right. Beautiful. Lovely morning. And disengage. Up and down, up and down, just like you're swimming through water. This works because of the fact that by pulling up, you generate forward thrust through these wings. It could be an exploit, but if you think about it, if you flap your wings, don't you create uh, some sort of thrust? I mean, there are um, NASA-built craft out there that are testing this idea. I forget what they're called. All right, now if you hit the F key, you'll activate the SAS temporarily. And that, of course, will make you fly like a bat out of hell. Now, so far, it's showing really good stabilization. You see the G? The, the, the G forces jump all the way up and down, up and down. You need those struts. All right, at about 10,000 meters is when we're going to try to do our um, acceleration for orbital and um, not orbital insertion, but actual getting up into space. All right, I'm going to hit the caps lock just to get a little bit more control out of this. There we go. Speed up a little bit more. Now, this is very hard. I've been doing this a lot. The video that I made before this one, which is kind of my test video, I failed like five times trying to get it up there. So definitely practice. Lots and lots of practice. You're not going to get it the first try. Like Neo in Matrix. Nobody ever makes it the first jump. Alright. Coming up on 10,000 meters. Getting ready for... To leap out of the atmosphere. And SAS will be on right about now. Keep it in the middle. You have to glance up and down. You have to make sure you're in the middle of the gimbal of the ball there. And stay around 11, 12,000 meters. 1,000 meters per second in climbing. Twelve. 1,300 meters per second. 1,400 meters per second. We're aiming for 1,700 before we start pulling the nose up. 12,000 meters per second. Come on, bring, bring the nose down. Bring the nose down. We need more speed. 
If you go past 12,000 meters, the atmosphere becomes so thin that this technique doesn't work anymore. So you gotta stay below 12,000, or at least 13,000. And my computer's freezing. Please don't freeze on me. Thank you. 18,000 ms in climbing. All right, we're gonna start pulling it up to a 45 degree angle. Don't pull it up too hard, or you will flip out. Don't pull it up too hard, you will flip out. Perfect, perfect. That was the best maneuver yet. I'm getting better. There we go. Let's check out our orbit, or um, a <laughs> hundred thousand meters. Perfect. All right, we're getting plenty of energy. We got solar panels in the front and back, so we don't have to worry about uh, running out of power. Awesome. Now, let's see if I can get this orbital maneuver. We only have we only have so much fuel, so getting it into orbit it can be a challenge, but it's very possible. If you've noticed this wide circular orbit here, that's another one of these craft I tried to put up there. But unfortunately, it's facing the wrong damn way. And this is before I put solar panels on the back of the craft. So since the f since the the craft only has the solar panels in the front, and it's facing the wrong way from the sun, it's dead. Just going around in circles. It will never, ever see life until this planet has orbited all the way around to the other side. Which is one of the reasons why I upgraded. Too bad they don't have music for atmosphere flight. Only for space flight. getting ready for the burn. Now at first you want to burn, <clears throat> excuse me, you want to burn uh, in front of the apoapsis or apogee and uh, get some more altitude, just a little bit more altitude. And then as you go past the apogee, which I know you're not supposed to, if you want to do this perfectly official whatever, Going past the apogee can be bad, because what happens is now you're burning in a downward direction. And when you're doing that, sure, you might make an orbit that's like 300 meters way out here, but unfortunately you've made that orbit going into the atmosphere at 20, 30,000 meters, and then going back out, which of course would never happen, because the atmosphere would slow your ass down, and this would drop, and a lot of bad juju. <clears throat> so... But with this being such a small craft, and us being already at 100,000 meters, I'm going to, and us having not so much fuel, not a whole lot of fuel, I'm going to try to use the gravity assist as you're dropping to increase speed faster. Very, very, very tricky. As you can see, I've already turned on the engine just a little bit. Try to build that up. Just a pinch. This is somewhat of our diving board, so the higher the better. But I don't want to use a whole lot of fuel. Ultimately, 
after I'm done figuring out the X2 and perhaps even an X3 of the um, of the 100 ton payload spacecraft that I'm going to show you after this. Maybe I'll actually take this little craft and uh, see if I can't make it a little bigger. Maybe even put a payload on it, like a tiny little microscopic satellite consisting of a probe body, a solar panel, and maybe a communitron antenna. I don't know. Something. Be kind of cool. Alright, as you can see with that tiny little burning that I've been doing, it it has kind of widened out just a little bit, not much. You can see it kind of growing. Alright, giving it a little bit more gas. A little more gas still. I'm going to try to keep the apoapsis in front of us as long as I possibly can. And here we go, gravity assist. We're past the apoapsis, which is very, very bad. But we're going to gamble, and hopefully we'll get into orbit. All right, at this point, you just want to keep as level as possible right on that orbital marker. Actually, I'm going to turn the gas up just a little bit, a little bit more. We need about 600 more, come on. Halfway through our gas tank, come on. I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit. I know it doesn't look like it, but gravity is allowing us to go faster. Just like anything, if you're falling straight down, you go faster. Come on. Give me speed, give me speed. Almost there. I'll bring down the throttle just a little bit. We're still pretty high, so it's okay. Save some fuel. Okay, I'm going to bring it down just a little bit more. Save more fuel. Try to keep it right there as best as you can. Almost there. Nine units of fuel left. Still at 100,000 meters. Eight units of fuel left. Almost there, 100 ms to go. Ninety-nine thousand meters and falling. Six units left. Come on, baby. Come on. All right. Let's check. What's this at? 53? That's no good. Okay. Bring the nose up. We only got five units, but we need to bring that... We need to bring that periapsis up. Because we are going straight down. Which is, of course, the bad part of going, the bad part of going past the apoapsis in your burn, is you have a tendency to do that. 
So I'm going to burn off a little fuel, try to bring that up. I am pointing the nose straight up. Come on. Four units of fuel left. I need to go past 70,000 to be in a safe orbit. I think we might make it. There we go. 70,000. And what I'll do is I'll just keep on burning until it's, uh, change that. Until it's three exactly, three units of fuel exactly. All right, that's good. Let's level out. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, if you've missed any part of this video, just feel free to rewind and check it out. Not only are we in orbit, but we got some fuel left for a possible deorbit. I don't know how you're going to land it. It's, maybe you could um, put wheels underneath here. I don't know. It's possible. But there you go. Awesome. All right. Now, without f further ado, let us go back, and I'll show you how the X2 is coming along. We will even try to take it off the... Hold on, please don't crash on me. We'll even try to fly it off the uh, runway. Now I'm not going to try to do a whole giant into the air, into orbit ordeal with this one. Because unfortunately, da, 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 where is it? It does have over a thousand parts, which was something I was trying to shy away from. But it seems as if if you want to get a hundred plus tons into space, more than likely your craft is going to break the 1,000 mark. More than likely. Although I will be doing more research and um, more testing and see if I can't remove more parts. And there she is. Now, if you remember from my other videos, it didn't have the engines. It was just a chassis with wings. I've added more wheels towards the back. Because during takeoff, it, I like to tear these apart. I've added struts. To keep the wings from wiggling really badly. I've added a whole bunch of uh, winglets for lift in the back and the front. And with these engines, I did not use part clipping. You can do this without part clipping. You simply put the part onto these little, uh, what do you call them? Cubic op octagonal struts. And for some reason, the game will see the cubic octagonal, blah, 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 the, the small little strut, but it won't see the part that's attached to it. So you can put these struts as close together as you want, and um, these won't want to turn red and not, not come together. So that's five jet engines, with about maybe 15 air intakes for each engine, so you can go pretty high. And some people might say, oh, well, that, you know, that's kind of still like cheating and stuff. Uh, I like to look at it this way. Over here on your left-hand side, you've got them whole bunch of parts, right? So why not use the engine parts to build a bigger engine capable of the strength of five jet engines? And that's the way I view it. So technically, in my mind, it's not 20 engines. It's four engines, four massive engines, each one with the power of five jet engines. That's the way I like to look at it. And it has four huge nuclear rocket engines, each with the power of three. So let's go ahead and uh, take this thing for a spin. If my computer doesn't take off into orbit. Hmm. 
Hmm. Come on. This is 1,170 parts, so it is very slow. There you go. See the wings are uh, relatively sturdy. Now, when I, unfortunately, I um, because of this stupid thing is still in its experimental phases, these little fuel lines like to break in between here. When it loads up, it doesn't load up right, and it uh, tends to break them. So let's hit spacebar and see if we have that problem still. Ah, crap. All right, so that one's not working. And that one's not working. It looks like something broke down there. So let's go ahead and fix that before we try to fly off. You do not want to use symmetry when you put these pieces together. I'm not talking about the actual parts parts, but the fuel lines that go in between the engines. You don't want to use symmetry. And the reason for that is, for some odd... For some odd reason, um, it doesn't tend to clone them properly on the other side. So while it might look like it's okay on one side, it'll be all broken up on the other side. So make sure symmetry is off. Take that out. Oh, what did I do? What did I do? Oh, I took the whole darn thing off. Yes, the engine is one piece. So, well, one of many. We'll go ahead and fix that. I'll just load up. This is a good reason why you save every time you do something to your craft. Because if you royally fuck up, it, um, yeah. You can just go back and load. Because unfortunately, KSP does not have a um, undo button, which is something I really hope they put in there. An undo button would work miracles. Who else agrees with that? Okay, so let's check down. Oh, I hate this song. I hate this song with a passion. If anyone knows how knows how to get into the program and delete this song please please leave a comment tell me how to do it because it is loud and it is annoying all right make sure your angular snap is off when you do this save and launch please launch leave leave get out get out get out oh gosh uh, go away thank you Hmm. Hmm. Maybe it uh, actually crashed this time. Nope. There we go. Uh huh. There we go. Responding. Oh. There we go. All right, let's try this again. Spacebar. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, action group two. Turn off nuclear engines. And shift. Full power. Now, I, w 
would love to put some sort of inspirational music to this, but in my last video I tried to do that. And unfortunately I was warned by YouTube that if I did that again, they'd give me a strike against my uh, account. So, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I wish I could put something really cool behind this, but... Nope. Not allowed. Alright, I'm tapping the A key. Try to keep it on course. It's, uh, it's wanting to come over to the right a little bit. At about 80 ms is when we uh, start picking up enough speed to, uh, for lift. You gotta remember this SSTO by itself, I'm pretty sure it weighs a lot. So if you add a hundred ton payload to it, which is the orange fuel tank here and then this other fuel tank here. All together about 108 tons. It's a lot of weight. A lot of weight. Alright, let's try lifting the nose up. There she goes. Come on, you big bitch. There you go. Up, up and away. SAS on. Landing gears up. It's pretty cool, huh? Now I would love to show you the entire journey all the way up into orbit, but unfortunately that would be another 30 minutes, or 30 or 45 minutes to this uh, video. It's time we do not have right now. Maybe uh, one of these days I'll do the whole thing and kind of uh, compress the time and kind of narrate from the background, but that's something that will be uh, for another weekend. She looks really nice, huh? Very stable. It's wobbling a, little, wobbling a little bit here, but that's to be expected from such a heavy craft. I like the way those jets look. She is, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully I won't have to design an X3. The X2 might be the final prototype. Alright. Awesome. Well, thank you for watching. This is Veos signing off.